So in this question, in order to calculate the maximum value of the induced magnetic field that occurs at a radial distance of uppercase R, where uppercase R represents the radius of a circular plate, we have to apply Maxwell's law of induction, which we have written right here. And we can see that in order to evaluate that, we have to begin by integrating a dot product. Now, to understand this dot product, let's take a look at the picture. We can see a magnetic field line at the top here pointing to the right. And this red circular area is what we call an Amperian loop. And we've drawn the Amperian loop in a circle because the shape of our parallel plates is also circular. And we note that along the length of this Amperian loop, we're going to have small incremental distances. We label these distances as ds, and we can point this ds to the right as well. ds is just a very tiny distance along that circular Amperian loop. And if we look carefully, the angle between the magnetic field vector and that ds vector is zero degrees. So let's take the dot product and let's rewrite it as the magnitude of that induced magnetic field multiplied by the magnitude of ds and then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them, which again is zero degrees. On the other hand, on the other side, we have the two constants being multiplied together, and then we have the derivative of the electric flux with respect to time. Now, let's recall that electric flux is electric field multiplied by the area. In this case, the area would be the area enclosed by our Amperian loop. So it would be pi times radius squared. So we can actually rewrite the electric flux in that manner. We're going to have the electric field multiplied by pi times the radius of our Amperian loop and then squared. Furthermore, we recall perhaps from an earlier unit that the electric field can be rewritten as well. And we can do so in the following manner. Electric field was equal to the electric potential divided by the distance between the two plates. So we will make that final rewrite and replace electric field with electric potential over the distance between the plates times pi times radius squared. So we come back over here and we're looking for the derivative with respect to time. So we'll have the derivative of the electric flux, which again, we will replace with this value right here. And then this is done with respect to time. Back on the left-hand side of the equation, the cosine of zero is one, so we can disregard that. The magnetic field that is induced along the Amperian loop has a constant magnitude along that loop. So because it's a constant, we can actually factor it to the outside of the integral. So we are left with the integral of just ds. Over on the right hand side, when we compute the derivative, we recall that these values, the distance between the plates, the radius of our Amperian loop, these are constant values. So when we differentiate this quantity, we can actually take the constants to the outside of the derivative. So we're basically left with pi r squared over d, and then that's going to be multiplied by dv dt the rate of change in the electric potential. Now, a little bit further work is needed here. We have the integral of ds. Recall that ds was just that incremental length along the Amperian loop. The integral would be the sum of all those little incremental lengths around the perimeter of this Amperian loop. Well, the sum of all the little incremental lengths around the perimeter of a circle is the circumference of the circle. So this integral ds just becomes the circumference of our Amperian loop. So we would have b times 2 pi r. Okay, so we are getting somewhere here. We do seek to maximize the value of the induced magnetic field. That's actually what this question is asking us. Now, to find a maximum value would mean that this quantity right here would also need to be maximized. So this needs to be maximized. Now, if we look, we are given an equation for the electric potential as a function of time. But to maximize that function, we would have to compute its derivative. This is a basic notion from calculus. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at this equation and we're going to be calculating the derivative of that equation. So let's go ahead and do so. We'll write down the equation again. So v is equal to 150 times sine. It looks like they have 2 pi times 60. Why don't we just write that as 120 pi? It'd be a little bit easier. And then times time. So here we go. The derivative dv dt. We recall the derivative of the sine function is cosine. So we would have 150 cosine of 120 pi t. But then chain rule requires us to multiply by the derivative of the inside quantity here, which would be 120 pi. So this would then, in order to find the maximum, have to be set equal to 0. However, there is a bit of a shortcut here. Rather than going through the process of solving this for time and getting wrapped up in the calculus, remember, we're trying to maximize this value right here. And we recall that the cosine function oscillates between a maximum value of positive 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. So you can just imagine a basic cosine function bopping up and down between 1 and negative 1. Therefore, to maximize the dv dt, we would just take the maximum value of this cosine function, which would be 1. So if you keep that in mind that the max value here is just 1, then we actually have found the maximum value of dv dt. It would just become 150 times 1 times the 120 pi. And this works out to be a rather large number, but this will be the correct value that we're going to be using for the maximum value of dv dt. It's going to be measured in volts per second. So we are getting somewhere finally. We're going to be calculating the maximum value of b. And if we clean up the equation just a little more, we can see that we can cancel out the pi's on each side. We can cancel a factor of r on each side and then we'll divide the two over. So we are finally left with b max is equal to these two constants multiplied together, multiplied by r, multiplied by dv dt's maximum value, divided by two times the distance. So let's go ahead and plug in the known values. Recall that we're looking for the maximum value when lowercase r is equal to uppercase r. So you can imagine the Amperian loop whose radius is lowercase r, basically expanding until it reaches the outer radius of the plate itself. So that would be uppercase r. We have the value of uppercase r. We have the plate separation, which is little d. And so we'll go ahead and plug everything in. So the values have been plugged in. Notice the mu naught and epsilon naught. Those are the two constants. Notice the uppercase r has been converted into meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus Three. So just make sure you make that conversion. And then similarly for the plate separation, lowercase d, we've multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 to get that into meters as well. And we can now punch this into the calculator. And finally, we have the maximum magnetic field has a magnitude of about 1.9 times 10 to the minus 12 Tesla. And that would be the correct answer to part A of the question. We do have a request for a plot. Your homework system probably doesn't actually want that. And frankly, the analysis for that is even more complex than for part A. So we're going to stick with just answering part A in this case.